All right, a few people have asked me, hey, what have you done to keep Gregory dry? Because during this time, which is summer, it's coming up here. Actually, it's in full swing right now. It's getting mighty hot. But the bus is going to get rained on. You know, what are you going to do to keep Gregory dry? Well, it's been raining the last couple days, kind of a lot. And it's expected to rain again tonight and probably part of tomorrow. So I got this uh, tarp that you see on here. Which means it's the first time in 20 years that Gregory got to see a rainstorm and didn't have to get wet. So lucky him, he's managed to stay dry. This tarp is enormous. I got more tarp than what I paid for. I should take a real measurement on it. I think it's about six feet longer in each direction than it should, should actually be. It's just, it's huge. Huge big intent. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> we got a tarp on there that we throw over there over here and uh, it keeps him dry and it should do should do quite well to keep him that way. Anyways, welcome back to the Midday q and I'm your host, the Duck Man. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back today talking about Gregory and a few of the questions that I've been asked. And uh, some of them I've actually been asked, like, repeatedly. And one of the first things is, let me go ahead and grab the damn thing. I forgot to bring it out here. Stupid idiot. Ugh. Great. How'd I manage to get locked out? Oh, I didn't. The door just got jammed. All right, one of the things people are commenting on repeatedly is the bus clock. You know that... Oh, that's good for it, right? Well, you saw me throw it in a box, just the same. And yeah, it's, uh, it's got glass, but it's, it's crushed. It's like all parallelogrammed or trapezoidal anymore. It's, it's, not, it's not proper. It's, it's messed up. This clock, I was told that, uh, hey, it's from a 67. So if you've got this clock in your bus, that it's probably a 67. Well, <laughs> there's a little more to it than that. Having a look on the inside here where it goes, which is on the passenger side, right underneath where the uh, pull handle should be, uh, there's no hole. Well, there you go. So obviously this clock did not come from this bus. Uh, so you can't actually determine the, the age of it. But besides the fact that um, I was told, once again, set by several people, these clocks only came in 67s, but I think that's false because I have seen a lot of buses that were earlier that came with them, and they were deluxe only. Now, this is a panel, panel van, so it's, it's not meant to have even the deluxe trim that you see on the front here, so it shouldn't have the clock either. Needless to say, yeah, it's just uh, it's going to get cleaned up. I'm going to see if it actually still works, and uh, no matter what happens to it, it's going to probably wind up sitting on the shelf in my living room where I keep all my little old Volkswagen stuff that's not in good enough shape to use anymore, and I think this is uh, something that should fit in there very nicely with it. I don't know if I could buy a new bezel. Maybe I could straighten the case out, but who knows? Something for later. One of those things I'm not going to worry about right now. Well, what else we got today? My bus part that I don't understand the names of. Let's go ahead and have a look at some of this stuff. All right, I incorrectly thought that this was my bus pedal cluster uh, underbelly cover. Yeah, I thought it was this one, and it turned out it was this one that belongs in there. This one that I didn't know what it went to. So I got these two things mixed up. Some people have pointed that to my attention, but I really, I still think it's this one, but apparently it's not. It's likely this. So we're going to keep that in a safe place. This is um, looking like it's probably going to be repairable. It's actually in really, really good shape. I don't see any rust through holes on it. Nothing like that at all. I thought that was a crease, but it looks like that's actually part of the reinforcement on it, the way they uh, manufactured it. So I think this is a keeper. We're going to try to restore that and reuse it. All right, down inside the bus here, we're looking at the driver's side. Here's your steering wheel. This here I keep calling the wheel well, or the fender, or I've called it a few other things, uh, a tub, a wheel tub. It is kind of a wheel tub, but what it actually is known as is a seat pedestal. 
Simple as that. You think about what goes up on top of it, not so much what goes up underneath it. So yeah, this is actually the seat pedestal. The seats will bolt right down on top of those accordingly. And uh, <laughs> I don't know why. I didn't think the name was quite so simple. But yeah, this is actually a seat pedestal, so your seat sits on top of that. And actually, it sits down in the depression. It doesn't sit up here. It sits down in here. I think on some earlier buses, these uh, were shaped a little bit differently. So you may discover how the seats would mount in there a little bit differently. But I do like the fact that the seats do sit down a little bit lower. Being as tall as I am, buses don't have a whole lot of headroom. So I want to sit a little further back, uh, more like I do in, in a sports car, like a 350Z, or even how I've constructed Eleanor. So I'll be modifying how the seats attach in here. And that's one of those things that's going to be tailored to my purpose and my use. And then back in here, back where the floor is to the in-between walkthrough area, damn mosquitoes everywhere, right in here where you saw me cutting out in one of the last videos. That area, I have been notified by multiple people that if I continue to cut out of that, it's going to probably collapse and uh, it's not going to be very, very strong and it's probably gonna give me problems down the road. At the glove box area that was in here in the middle that I, I removed was actually the reinforcement that stops the bus from collapsing in on the sides. Now, based on the geometry of the vehicle, I don't see how that would possibly happen. Uh, yeah, I'm sure it adds some rigidity this way, but you got to think of what else runs this way that's more rigid than any of this ever was. And that's your axle beam. And that sits right about here, running this way. So essentially, that's holding the bus up. Now, sure, if I tried to remove the axle beam and uh, I did something like, you know, jack up the car, or tried to move it around or bounce it around, jostle without the axle beam in place, it could certainly be more flexible than it would have been before. So I will be adding some type of reinforcement to that anyway, and since I have to actually cut all that out because it's, it's so ugly and has so many rust holes in it, that I'll be building something in there, and I have not found a proper patch panel either for it, so I'll probably be building some kind of uh, something out of custom-built corrugated uh, steel. I'll weld that into place, and I'll put some kind of reinforcements on the bottom of it to try to keep it as rigid as possible. And as I said with Eleanor, for anything that I removed or took away, I tried to add something else in place to try to uh, replace that integrity, the structural integrity that it used to have. So yes, I will be reinforcing that. Uh, some people gave me some wacky ideas, as much as even putting like a roll cage around the thing. And that seems a bit extreme to me. Although I rather like the roll cage idea of the inside of the bus. Since this is going to be a custom, that may not be a bad idea, but we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. That's one of those last things that I'm going to do if I wind up doing that. Um, just before you do paint, that's probably one of the things I get into is building a cage. But again, I digress. We're way off on a tangent here. Um, as far as the uh, reinforcements in the floor or this walkthrough area, yes, I'll be putting something in there. And yes, I'll be replacing that floor. That's just something that's absolutely required. But once again, as far as rigidity is concerned, um, removing that wall that went vertically this way it was like a big sheet of of a steel that stood up vertically that probably provided more structural integrity than this box ever did so that's gone i would worry more about that thing being gone than anything else and probably if i were going to try to replace that amount of integrity from that box i would put a giant x through here with a uh, tube steel and then frame it all the way around you know big giant square with an x in it that would make the bus more rigid than anything and as I said, if I decide to uh, turn it into a um, uh, roll caged bus, I'll build something like that. Once again, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. A lot of people have commented, hey, Duckman. Oh, shit. Okay. Some of you that have been watching would probably remember my last tech video over on Duckman Cycles that I did mention I was going on against CT Moog with a little bit of a build-off competition where we're both working on our buses at the same time. And a lot of people have mentioned, hey, Duckman, how could you possibly take on another channel with two people building a bus? And my answer is really simple, and it's going to make my head sound like it's, you know, this big. But actually, you know, it is this big. <laughs> but the answer is, I'm the motherfucking Duckman. I mean, you know, needless to say, I'm still learning about the bus. A bus is not something I've ever had, so there's going to be a lot of things I'll need to learn in this process. But along the way, all the things that I've done before, welding, cutting, fabricating, it's really nothing new. The only thing that's going to be different is the 
shapes that I'm making. So for some of the shapes that I was used to building on all the different beetles that I've worked on before, you know, building this isn't going to be any different than me working on, let's say, Ruby, you know, Type 3. I replaced panels on that just the same. I just had to make something in a different shape. But all the same rules still applied. So as far as CT Moog is concerned, hey, I can take them on. You know, I am the duck man. I'm not, not worried in the least bit that two guys are working on something and they may get it done faster than me. It, it's, I don't think the build-off is necessarily going to be about speed, but CT Moog is a really good guy. And uh, I forget the name of his helper, um, Joey, Justin, something with a J if I'm not mistaken. But he seems like a really nice guy too and I'm hoping that when I get down that way I get to meet both of these two. And who knows, maybe it'll have happen over the summer. We've got a bunch of uh, Florida car shows coming up, for Florida Volkswagen shows, so I might just run into them along the way. But anyways, we're going to take it step inside because we got to talk about Eleanor. I ordered some parts, you remember last week, and I got the wrong parts. It turns out I ordered the wrong thing. That was on me. That was my fault this time. And I ordered the proper parts and they, they arrived yesterday, real late, and I opened up the box and I got exactly what I wanted. But let me demonstrate exactly what we've got and uh, give you guys a little rundown as to what's coming up on Eleanor very, very soon. We'll be back in just a second. <laughs> okay, we're here in my indoor workshop and what I bought for Eleanor was these. And you might be looking at that and you say, you know, what the hell is that? That doesn't look like anything that's Volkswagen. But what it is, is it's a, uh, it's a door hinge. And you may be saying, hey, you know, why would you want to replace the door hinges on Eleanor? Don't your door hinges work? They do. But I find them incredibly ugly. So I wanted to get some recessed hinges. And the idea was to take the hinges and cut them off the doors and give the car that beautiful streamlined look that it has. The deck lid and the hood have hidden hinges, so why don't the doors? And Volkswagen's answer probably is, well, because they're cheap and because they work. So, yeah, because they're cheap and they work is exactly why <laughs> I want to replace them, because they're ugly. So, anyways, this is what I got. And looking at this, it was just entirely too big to put in the door jam. Now, I, don't, I didn't know what I bought. I, I thought they were all the same when I bought them. And it turned out this is for, like, a, an old Merc or something, you know, big Buick, some kind of monster car. But what I needed wasn't so much this part what I needed was something that was much smaller let's see stand this up here so you guys can see the full impact what I needed was one like that it's a lot smaller than the other piece just a lot smaller particularly in the uh, the width right here going from side to side you see the difference in the width. I mean, this one is just enormous. This is the same width as the door pillar or the A pillar on, on the front of the door. So there's no way that would be able to go in there and clear the hinge pin at the same time. This one is about, oh, I say about an inch and a half uh, th more thin. So at an inch and a half thinner than the other one, it should be able to fit inside the door no problem. Now you probably notice that these two are welded together and they do that to try to keep them square. But as I learned when I put them right here on my grid, that this thing is not square. This one is square, this is square. I've got this little piece squared off to here. But when I look at these here, yeah, they're, they're floppy and they're not going in the same angle. So these need to both move adequately in the correct positions. If these are out of square, what will happen is you'll open a door to a certain point and the hinges will start to bind and you'll hear that squeakiness and the door will be difficult to open. That's wrong. So these hinges are gonna need to be fixed. I might also um, cut the spacer out and maybe make it a little wider. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it once again. But let's take this outside to Eleanor so you guys can actually see what we're looking at. And they give you a little bit of an idea as to what we're doing here. Now some people say, hey, Dark Man, why don't you just put suicide doors on it by going ahead and mounting your hinges up in the backside over here. And I don't want suicide doors. You know why? Because I think it's way overplayed. Yeah, you guys might think it looks cool. And for those of you that build it, that's your car. But I'm not doing it because, well, like I said, it's overplayed. Too many other people have done it before, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep the doors in the stock format, but hide them damn hinges. I just don't like those things, so they're going to go away. Okay, I'm doing the best that I can here to show this to you. I'm only using one hand. There's really no area in here to set up a tripod. But this is the door jam, and if you remember, that hinge was every bit as wide as this is here. Where I need to put this hinge is going to be recessed into here. I'll cut a rectangular hole, and I'll slide the hinge in. I'll probably come in from the other side but uh, I'll slide the hinge in. This is where the factory hinge position is. The other one's down here at the bottom. Now, if you look at the side of the door, uh, A-pillar, you'll notice that it bulges out. So I'm going to need to do some math to make sure that these hinges accommodate for that so when the door opens, it doesn't drag on the highest point that's uh, along here. Now, these hinges should go, 
Let's see if I'm doing this right. Something like, ow, it helps if I don't pinch my finger in the damn things. Something like this right here. And you'll see how that will fit inside of there. It shouldn't be too big of a problem to slide that into a square shaped hole. And the other thing you want to do on these is you want to make sure that they are level or at least plumbed. And the bottom hinge is not staying put. Stay put hinge. Yeah, you hingy bingy mother fucker. Okay, I've just kind of got it pressed into place. But you can see right there on the bottom, the lower hinge should fit down inside the A pillar and uh, the upper one should fit into it right about there. I think if I put them in the spaces that it's currently at, I should be able to swing it open and have clearance. But I would like to rather put the hinge more up in the, in the stock position because I think up in the stock position is a lot more steel up there and it's a much stronger point. So I'm going to um, have to pull the hood off and look down inside of there and see what I can figure out. But yep, these hinges are going to go on there and that eliminates the need for the old Volkswagen hinges that stick out beyond the, uh, the gutter here, which again, I just think are just ugly as hell. So I'm going to make them go bye-bye. That's right, you see it here first. Boy, it's a really hot and sticky day today, so I am just sweated up, so if it looks shiny, that's why. <laughs> Anyways, yep, that's the deal with these hinges. I'm really excited to get started on Eleanor. That means Gregory is going to take the back seat because Eleanor is high priority right now. I need to get her out and uh, to paint with Earl this summer. So I've got to finish up some minor body work. I think the biggest deal is going to be these hinges, but once we get that sorted out, the rest of it will be pretty easy. So as always, like, comment, subscribe, pluck that dingle belly. And if you have any questions for me to answer in a Q&A video, ask them here, ask them wherever. Throw them in a comment, throw them in an email to me at duckmancycles at duckshit.net. You can also hit up my website, which is duckshit.net. I find all of my social media links and you can contact me on any one of those social medias. So if you've got one of them, contact me there and I'll be glad to answer your question in video as best that I can, as always. So I really do thank you guys for sticking with me. Uh, 20,000 subscribers over on uh, Duckman Cycles just this week. Uh, to me, that's just <laughs> mind blowing. 20,000. When I got started, I never thought that I was gonna just ever hit that number. I was hoping for like a thousand. Back in the days of early YouTube, you know, a thousand subscribers was a big deal. <laughs> Nowadays, woo, a thousand ain't too much anymore. But for those of you that are building your channels and you're still working on them and you're growing, hey, good for you. Stick with it. There's a lot more YouTubers now than there used to be, so you're much more likely to get subscribers of a much, much higher number than I did back then. So anyways, thank you guys for watching again. Really, thank you, thank you very much. And uh, we'll be back hopefully tomorrow with a tech session video. That's right, all those Volkswagen guys are gonna get together and it's an open invite. If you happen to be in a Pensacola area, check us out. Check out duckshit.net, look at my events list. Oh, actually, they're not there. I need to get my new website up. I need to finish the website. This is on the beta version of the website you guys can't see yet. But it's going to show uh, the events that I will be attending, or at least that I'm considering attending, uh, as a separate column on that, that website. But anyway, check out uh, rareairvw.com, and you can see the events on that page. And uh, look for the tech session to be tomorrow. So if you're in the Pensacola area, come join us. We're probably going to have pizza for lunch. We'll be talking Volkswagens. We'll be working on Volkswagens. Hopefully, we're working on Volkswagens. The last couple times, actually, we've had a lot of um, just like turn a couple bolts, tighten idle screw, replace a distributor cap kind of tech session stuff that's stupid simple. And I couldn't run the camera to these guys fast enough while they finished the work. So anyways, uh, <laughs> hopefully you guys stick around and uh, watch for the tech session video tomorrow. Thanks again for watching. Take care.